In part two, we will use 3ds Max's Unwrap UVW modifier to refine the UV mapping that we started in ZBrush. Additionally, we will talk about the importance of unifying UVW scale as well as maximizing our UV layout. Finally, we will export a UVW template image which we can use for texturing in Photoshop. All right, so now we're back in 3ds Max. Let's get that uh, OBJ that we just brought from ZBrush. So we need to just import that. to 3ds max a and I'm just going to use whatever default settings are here for ZBrush don't worry about this we'll skip that um, all these other things don't really matter and I'm just going to kind of move this off to the side so you can see what's going on now we have our nice mesh back in 3d studio max and the uh, next thing I'm going to do is I want to prepare the UVs on this so that I can start doing some uh, texturing and what I mean by that is if you remember our video that we had here, we're basically going to want to create some of these shapes that exist here on this turntable. So we're going to create some patterns that we'll be able to take into ZBrush and displace, kind of like the Celtic design here, and some of these little edge raisings that you see. So uh, just bear with me. This will make sense as we get into it. So I'm going to right click and then hide unselected. Let's change this to, uh, oops. Uh, edit poly and then basically just come in here and let's get our own unwrap UVW modifier on this it's off the screen so I'm going to show my uh, buttons here it's basically this one unwrap uh, UVW modifier and by default since we already did this in ZBrush you'll see that we have some nice cuts that are all along the edges here which is exactly what I wanted actually so this is perfect for what we want to start out with so let's open up our UV editor and of course we can see that we have everything laid out here. Now, the only UVs that I'm going to remap are going to be our front facing UVs because I want to have something that literally shows this like a front face that you see here. So let's go to our face mode and I believe, let's click this to go into element mode down here. Um, let's turn this to a different color because this gets a little bit confusing. Yeah, so we can see the front and back faces. Uh, these are the ones that I want to remap. So I'm going to do them separately. I'm going to do this by coming down here and on projection, click this. And let's go to the Y area here. Here you can see it's uh, just a little bit non-uniformly scaled. So if we come back up here on the Edit UVs, Quick Planar Map, now what it does is it actually scales it appropriately. So let's select the one on the back face. Before we can do that though, we have to turn this little planar map icon off. So now we have the back one selected. Let's click that again. Same deal, come up here, click that guy, and now we have both of these the same size. And they're pretty much laying on top of one another, which is actually perfect for what we need to do here because we're gonna be creating design for one and then just using that same design on another. So let's select uh, both of these and kind of just pull them off to the side. Now what I want to do is I want to retain this shape, but I want to make sure we don't have any overlapping. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find an area in here that I can cut that feels nice. So I'm going to grab this edge and then let's go to our back view. I'm going to grab this edge. And then if we come over here and then we do loop UV, um, you can see here that it's uh, selecting these two sides. And one thing that's kind of cool I want to show you guys really quickly is if you the uh, Edit UVW's window and then the Unwrap UVW modifier um, actions react a little bit differently. So your Edit UVW window will respect uh, breaks in your um, topology and your UV lines like this. But if we were to click this over here, so let me just show you, for example, we undo and you'll see this selected. If we were to select this now, it actually doesn't respect the cuts that you already have. That can be useful sometimes, other times it's not useful. So in this case, I know that I don't want to cut back here as well. So doing it in my edit UV window is perfect. So here we go. Let's cut this and we're gonna right click and just do break. And now it's its own UV island. And in fact, I think we can just take both of these and we'll just drag those off to the side. Let's just uh, pull those down out of the way. 
And let's drag one of these guys over here just a little bit so that they're right beside each other. Um, now the other thing we need to do too is these are not in scale to one another at the moment. So one really useful tool that you can use is if everything is actually relaxed properly, you can just come up here to hit tools. Sorry, let's pull this over so you can see it. Tools, relax clusters. And then now what that does is it basically just unifies your UV. So I'm gonna undo that and then I'm gonna minimize this. And what I'm gonna do is uh, put a checker material on here so you can see what's happening. Let's go to our material editor. Give it a second to load. I've already got a couple uh, different materials loaded up. I have a checker material in here that basically it's just this checker material map. I like this because the check checker material itself, the black and white one, it's hard in my eyes and then also too, you can't tell if anything's flipped. So if we put this on here and you saw something where it was reversed, that's not a good sign. So um, let's go ahead and apply that to our material. We'll turn on the show shaded material and viewport. Let's make sure our display mode shows a material color. Okay, so here we go. So now if we look at this, obviously you can see the big UVs on the side here and these. We, we wanna make sure these are the same scale. So that's where that rescale clusters thing works nicely. So let's pull up our window again. And then keep your eye on this. So whenever we select these, tools, rescale clusters, now you can see everything is unified properly. So that's only going to work if you've already kind of relaxed these appropriately. Um, so just be aware of that if it doesn't work and you try it out. So now we have these scaled properly. Now we need to basically just maximize our UV space. And I know I need to be able to put an intricate design on this. So I really need to make sure this is as big as possible within this section here. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some of these exterior portions here for this and this because it's just too big. So let's come up here. The first thing I'm going to do is um, select these top pieces. Let's go ahead and hide this because that's kind of annoying to look at. Go back to our edge mode here. And remember, let's do a loop selection over here so it doesn't go all the way around. Right click that, break it. And I'm going to use this rotate thing here because I want to line these up kind of nicely to one another because we're going to be putting a design on these as well. And then this one as well, let's go ahead and just rotate that preemptively. And we'll kind of break this one in the middle too, which I'm assuming is gonna be something like up here. So I'm gonna turn off this element mode here, or sorry, show back faces. And then let's edge select here, right click break. And let's rotate that guy as well. And at this point, I'm just trying to set things up to give myself a lot of UV space to work with. This might be enough, but it, yeah, I think this will work. So we're gonna work with this and let's make this window a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on here. Basically, I wanna fit everything into this little section here so we can extract a UV template. So we're just gonna come in here and really try to maximize the space. So we'll pull all these kind of UVs as close to one another as we can. Down here, there was a little something funky going on. If you want, you could come in and fix this. Sometimes ZBrush doesn't do stuff perfectly whenever it's relaxing. So that's what you're seeing here. But you can come in here and then you could just say, um, like right click and then weld selected. And then we could kind of move this into place. I mean, this is so small, it doesn't really matter at this point. I'm just doing the same thing up here. I'm not even gonna worry about that one. That way we can just kind of move on. If it was a production environment for work or something, I, I probably would fix that. I'm just moving these really close because I just want, again, to get as much UV space as I can. Uh, these are the little end bits. It's just so small, we can just move those off to the side. And then these, let's find a way to kind of Tetris these in. Fit them like a nice little puzzle here. That's probably gonna be okay. Now let's go ahead and move these into our section. 
need to fit these right in here. All right, I think this is pretty good and it should give us a good amount of UV space. So we have our top area here, which we're going to end up sending gems into eventually. And then we have this section, which will be our area that we're going to do our Celtic design. So I'm going to minimize this. And actually, let's come back to this. And let's go ahead and render a UV template. And this will help us prepare our Celtic designs. So come up here to Tools, Tools, Render UVW Template. And what I'm going to choose is 2048 by 2048 because I want to have a fairly high resolution to get the detail I need. And then just render UV template. And in here, it's a little bit big, uh, but if I scale it down, you can see now our wireframe here actually exists on a 2D image. So now let's just save that off, save image. And give me a moment to find the folder that I want to save this into. And we can just say this is a JPEG for now. Let's call it um, UVW template. And we can close these and right click lapse to. Yes. So now let's go ahead and uh, make a design for this in Photoshop. Hello everyone, Seth Thompson here. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and that you learned something valuable. And if you did, please share it. And I will talk to you guys again soon.